Hello, my name is Dr. Scharf, and what I'm going to do today is start the project of putting up one of those greenhouses that you get from Amazon, fairly inexpensive. I'm going to make some modifications to it as well. It's going to go in this area. You might be able to see some of the uh, orange stakes. I'm going to include this raised bed right here. I had already planted some items in there. And just give you a little uh, advice, perhaps, uh, on how to put up one of those greenhouses. My particular kit came with some very flimsy tools, but really all you're going to need is a good drill and the proper bit and a good wrench and you'll be off and running. My particular instructions were simply diagrammatic my attempt here will be to walk us through the diagrams and point out some areas that might be a little bit difficult to understand what they're intending and so I'll show you some photographs of the final product so that it might make it easier for the assembly. So the first thing you should do is just double check make sure you have all the appropriate parts. I found it most effective if I laid out all the pieces in order. The top little diagram, one needs to pay close attention and make sure you really include that pipe number 11 is firmly in place and that the screw goes through the connectors. Step 2 is probably the most difficult part of the construction and if you're going to need someone to help, this is the point after which you can probably go it alone. In step two, the top left diagram, the final product should end up looking like this. Notice that the flange actually covers the end of the cut pipe. Now this will be important later when the plastic is on so that the cut pipe doesn't actually chafe and cut the plastic. Now on step two, the bottom left insert is a little bit difficult to see, so here's a picture to get a better look. Notice that the flange actually sits underneath the pipe this time. There is actually a small plastic insert that will go in the end of the pipe, which will keep it from chafing the plastic. Take a special note of piece number 15, that cross member. It really provides a great deal of strength to the end wall of our hoop house. Once you have this end put up and in place, the rest of it goes together relatively easy. The drop down pieces for the end wall are relatively easy to put in place. Just make sure that the vertical pipe goes on the inside of the horizontal pipe or the base pipe on the ground. Now this image is actually the end product of step four. The illustration for step four is pretty easy to follow and the remaining sections go together exactly the same. So just make sure you put on those number 11 sections and tighten it up. These next couple of images are just there for reference. However, do notice that the vertical pipe does go on the outside of the base pipe. Furthermore, when you attach the vertical section, make sure the nut goes on the inside of the hoop house. The reason I'm mentioning this is we want to prevent any sharp edges from actually cutting the plastic. When you get to step seven and eight, they're simply the mirror image of the other end of the tunnel, which you've already completed. So just take your time. Now with step 9, we're going to finish off the end of the hoop house like we did the other end. And put on the braces for the arch. Now the following image will give you a better idea of how piece number 8 braces the arch. Now the last thing you do before putting on the plastic, according to the instructions, is to put on the wire that goes down the very center line of the arch. 
make sure you pay attention to the instructions at this point. Make sure the wire does in fact go on the outside of the arches. This is important because when it snows or rains that wire will lay against the arch and provide some strength and therefore slough off the snow and rain. This next image just shows you the fastener and notice that you can actually adjust this fastener so that as the wire sort of uh, stretches you can simply tighten it up. Now you might think at this point all you need to do is to stretch the plastic over and attach it. But what I'm going to do here is to provide some additional uh, stability items so that you can make this not a temporary greenhouse but more of a permanent greenhouse to withstand the winds that you may get in your area. What I'm using here are called sod staples and they're used for holding down ground cloth and I'm putting them around the base of the hoop house and that will provide some initial stability. These sod staples can be purchased at Amazon or purchased at a garden supply center. Furthermore I purchased some rebar that I had cut in two foot sections. These sections I drove in to the ground next to each post or each arch and then attach them to the arch with a U-bolt. Notice that I actually have the U-bolt attached in such a way that the sharp ends uh, are facing inwards. I wanted to add a little strength lengthwise so at one end I attached a carabiner to the vertical strut and ran it all the way to the other end and attached a come along connector which can be adjusted should the wire begin to stretch. I did this on both sides of the end walls. Once done it was obvious that it provided some real additional reinforcement lengthwise. Finally to provide some support laterally or from side to side I also attached wire from one arch to another at two different locations towards the center about two posts in and that provided a great deal of uh, lateral or side-to-side -side movement support. Once all the reinforcements were made I went back to the original diagrams and began to put on the plastic. Once I had the plastic laid out alongside the greenhouse making sure that I had the door on the end at the right end it was fairly easy to pull it over the top and begin to attach it. The elastic connectors went on quite easily but I suspect that they will degrade over time from sun and moisture so I'll have to figure out a new solution for that. Finally one last modification I used some plastic 8 inch flower pots and some gravel and placed them along the edge of the hoop house on the outside flap and that seems to really add some good stability. So far we've had some winds of about 15 to 25 miles per hour and the greenhouse has just stood up very well. So I hope this has given you some ideas for your hoop house. So happy gardening.